which according to many of the historians coincides the birth of the greatest man ever walked the earth, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From Hashim, Asadil is asking, Salaam Alaikum Shaykh, there is a lot of people celebrating the Mawlid, what should I do? Before answering this question, there are a few facts that we have to tackle. The first fact is the twelfth of Rabi'u al-Awwal, there is a general consensus among all historians is definitely the date of the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we all agree that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died on the twelfth of Rabi'u al-Awwal. What about the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We have too many different opinions, not only concerning the date, but also concerning the month. Some believe it is the month of Rabi'u al-Awwal. Some historians said it is the following month. And some historians said, no, it was a Ramadan. And the year is the year of the elephant. The day there is a general consensus that the Prophet ﷺ was born on Monday. Consigning which date, we're not sure. Whether the second, whether the third, the eighth, the ninth, or the twelfth of Rabi' al-Awwal, for those who say he was born on the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. So that means these are all different opinions. And you cannot say the twelfth of Rabi' al-Awwal is the most accurate, because in fact, according to the calculations, what is more accurate is the ninth of Rabi' al-Awwal. And I'm sure those of you who have studied the seerah in the beautiful summary of al rahiq al Maktoum, the seal nectar, by uh, Safi al-Rahman Mubarakafuri, may Allah have mercy on his soul. In the first, in the Muqaddimah, first few pages, he has mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu was born most likely on the ninth of Rabi' al-Awwal. What do we understand out of that? A combination of all the previous references gives us an impression that not even the Prophet ﷺ knew exactly the date of his birth. Because back then, they used not to pay attention to that. But he knew that he was born on Monday because that is stated in the hadith. In the sound hadith, an Nabi ﷺ said, on Monday I was born, and on one day, on Monday, unzila alayya fi. The beginning of the Wahi started off on Monday when he was in the cave of Hira. So this is guaranteed. Agreed upon it. Why? Because the Nabi said so. What was the prophetic way of commemorating this day? It was simply a means of giving thanks to Allah by allowing him to be born on that day. So the Nabi used to fast on Mondays, not on the twelfth, not once a year, but every Monday and every Thursday, if he was not Musafir, he's fasting. And he was asked why these two days, so he said for Monday, I was born on that day, so I give thanks to Allah. So if any Muslim wanted to commemorate the remembrance of Allah, of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, not once a year, follow his footsteps, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you love him so much, uh, you want to fast Mondays of every week, then you're really celebrating and commemorating the remembrance of the Prophet ﷺ. Nowadays and since the beginning of the month of Rabi'u al-Awwal, I myself in every Friday sermon, in every ta'aleem in class, I speak about the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, his birth, his mission. We were so lucky that we were chosen by Allah to film an entire program of 30 episodes talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his biography and how he dealt with various kind of people. MashaAllah. So this is also a way of commemorating the remembrance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What people do of beating the drums and dancing and singing songs Assuming that, mashallah, this is how we celebrate the birth of the Prophet sallallahu I can assure you that has nothing to do with the sunnah. 
that has nothing to do with the love of Prophet Muhammad whatsoever simply because neither him nor his loved ones have ever done so. Even under regular circumstances, this is not uh, something permissible. Those who dance and sing, we don't do that as Muslims, let alone doing it uh, to celebrate the birth of the Prophet ﷺ once a year on a date that is not confirmed. And no one on earth can come up and say, well, it's confirmed because the Prophet used to celebrate it, or Abu Bakr, or Umar, or even 124,000 companions, or even the following generation, or the following one. The Fatimites, who were outest sect of the Shia, and the Fatimites, by the way, who occupied Egypt and North of Africa, they were not Muslims. They were not only deviant uh, sect from Shia, or from Shiaism, because not all Shias are alike, but the Fatimites were pretty extreme. In a sense, يعني, look at the name, beautiful, who occupied Egypt, and Mu'izz, the one who gave dignity to the deen of Allah. Number one, they never belonged to the family of the Prophet ﷺ, but any occupation forces, in order to assure the occupied people that they belong to them, so they fabricated that. Napoleon, when he occupied Egypt, he went to Al-Azhar and he declared the Shahada, just to assure people I'm one of you, and he was a liar. You know, occupying forces to suck the blood and the wealth of the countries that they occupy. So anyway, the Fatimites were non-believers. Because this guy, besides claiming the prophethood, he claimed the lordship. Many people do not know that. Many people do not know, even Egyptians, that the very first Mawlid celebration was invented by the Fatimites, who kept the Egyptians busy and all the occupied territories in Africa with these celebrations and festivals, even to unknown personalities. So by the time they finish this Mawlid, there is another Mawlid, and there is another Mawlid, and there is a Mawlid, and there is a commemoration of the death, and so on and so forth. Up until this moment, you will find a very unique way of celebrating the Mawlid. Here in Egypt, for instance, they sell, uh, you know, a bride or a doll made of sugar, and a horse and a horseman also made of sugar, of very bad quality, terrible. It was invented also by the Fatimites. So simply, we as Muslims were required to think before we imitate and we copy. I claim that I love the Prophet ﷺ more than myself. And because of that, I try my best to propagate his message, to imitate him in his sunnah, in his way of living, in his way of dealing with others, in eating, in sleeping, in answering the call of nature, in uh, tahara, in the ibadat and the rituals, in the way I deal with my wife and my kids. By that, you truly love the Prophet ﷺ. You truly commemorate his remembrance, not once a year, on a date which is not uh, certain, rather throughout your life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best.